ओके सो हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू एल आई लेक्चर नंबर थर्टी एट सी टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द इफेक्ट ऑफ बायस करेंट्स ऑन द ओपम इंटीग्रेटर सर्किट सो लेट्स स्टार्ट a little bit of background on input bias currents they are modeled as constant current sources okay since their value is almost a constant and uh, next the effect of bias current on the op amp integrator so here is my plain looking op amp integrator but specially my bias currents iv plus and iv minus are marked over here right so we need to know what the circuit does in absence of a bias current so let's say that if uh, we set v in equal to 0 and analyze the circuit uh, just with the input bias current that is iv plus and iv minus so they are constant values that's our assumption okay so we'll proceed further okay i have to reduce this slightly i think now it's fine yeah so assuming that the op amp is ideal in other aspect so v plus is approximately equal to 0 uh, from the circuit so we have v plus and v minus is equal to 0 Correct. Right? After that, the capacitor C1 has no charge initially. That is, V C1 at t equal to zero is zero. So let's find the expression for the output uh, voltage V out as a function of as a uh, yeah. So basically, your capacitor voltage initially is kept to zero. Okay. So let's find the expression of V out as a function of time. and uh, from this diagram we can easily say that since v plus is tied to the ground v minus will be virtually grounded okay so this is a virtual ground or a virtual sort concept now with v in equal to 0 ir1 will be 0 okay and if i apply the kcl over here ir1 will be equal to i minus is iv plus iv minus will be equal to uh, plus uh, ic1 okay so over here the ic and ir1 are same Uh, basically ic1 and iv1 are same because a constant current is going to the capacitor okay now in summary if we see iv minus over here iv minus is equal to ic1 is equal to c1 c dv by dt okay i repeat current going to the capacitor is given by the formula c dv c by dt so what will be the voltage across the capacitor 1 upon c1 integral of 0 to t iv minus into dt okay i hope that clarifies your point so vc1 will be equal to uh, iv minus divided by c1 into t where t is the time progression and over here from the output loop kvl will get v out is equal to uh, v out is equal to what okay so now the output expression uh, you have vc1 will be equal to v out minus v minus actually here also again v minus will come uh, i will improve on that okay so which is equal to v out because v minus is zero and uh, your v out will be equal to iv minus upon c1 into t that means this is the output of an op amp integrator in absence of an input okay now uh, ib minus flows through capacitor c1 keeping it integrating it that is uh, that is v out grows with time until it reaches the op amp saturation voltage so the capacitor voltage c1 vc1 will drive the op amp into saturation okay so that's how it goes so what was the equation let me just check it okay okay fine no problem so over here iv minus flows through the capacitor let me just check it over here iv minus flows through the capacitor c1 and keeps it integrate and keeps it integrating again and again that means the v out will grow with time until it reaches the op amp saturation voltage so the capacitor voltage vc1 will drive the op amp into saturation okay so the plot will look something like this 
so here i will open up the plot for you all for your reference yeah i guess that is fine the font is fine yeah so what do we get over here uh, over here we see that the in output is increasing i will show you the equation so v out is given by iv minus upon c1 into t so as the time progresses v out also progresses linearly but how how it will go because it is progressing linearly there might be a point where the opam will just enter into saturation so we should avoid this saturation region right and we should operate the opam in the linear region uh, opam as a integrator works in the linear region of operation okay now the capacitor voltage vc1 will drive the output into saturation if it is okay so that means integrator fails because of its input bias current so in summary circuits allow bias current to be integrated indefinitely this will make the circuit go into saturation and it will go in saturation and due to input bias current we have to fix this problem uh, of opam saturation correct and to fix this uh, problem we fix the integrator circuit so that the bias current does not saturate it so we have to do a minor modification so what we have added over here is register r2 so register r2 is added over here rest all its uh, remaining the same from the previous circuit the minor modification is added in the form of register in parallel with capacitor c1 so the register r2 will ensure that opam doesn't go into saturation uh, indefinitely okay the rcom can be one of the technique to compensate the effect of bias current but uh, you know which it's optional actually so since we know now what is the r uh, compensation techniques for inverting and non inverting similarly you can apply it anywhere so the summary of opam non linearities or non idealities are there are two types input bias current and dc offset voltage now for the opam integrator vio and ib will lead to saturation unless an alternate dc part appears or it provided so in ac applications that is audio the dc shift arising due to vio or ib is of no consequence since the coupling capacitor will block it anyway okay so next is a small dc shift is a matter of concern when the output is expected to be a dc or a slowly changing quantity example uh, taking the readings from lm35 temperature sensor might be a slow process hence its frequency is also very very small so in conclusion we should choose an opam which have a lower value of vio and a higher value of ib cube okay so that's what the recommendation is so choose the opam which have much lower value of vio and uh, yeah so and ib basically so this is was the diagram let me just summarize of what we have done so in this lecture we have started with the input bias current modeling and then we have seen the effect of bias current on the opam integrator with all the steps and the output shown and uh, over your integrator fails due to integration of its input bias current okay so in summary the circuit allows the bias current to be added uh, to be integrated uh indefinitely this will make the opam go into saturation due to input bias current so we have to fix this problem of opam saturation so we fix this problem by adding a register r2 and uh, we have analyzed that if we add the register r2 it will avoid the uh, you know direct part of opam going into saturation so that's it for that and uh, we 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 will continue on this in the next class so until then have a good day and thank you